Hello. Very good evening. I thought I'll go live two minutes before just to let people should have notification. They can tune in by the time I light the lamp and you know. Invocation of Ganesha. That's very important. Let's see if anyone tunes in this this Sunday evening. Again, I don't know why I'm feeling like as if it's a Saturday. Yesterday I was feeling like today is a Sunday. I'm in a time-confused zone or something. <sighs> I have two more people attending today's Tea and Tail with me. Let me show you. Okay, somebody has tuned in. Can you see them? Yeah, you can kind of see them. Let me shift because I would want them in the picture with me and I would like it if they are here. So why don't you two come here? Huh, that's better. Okay, let's see who tunes in with us. We still have one more minute to go. So I'm not in a, I'm not at all in a hurry about anything. So mm, let's hope we have some people spending their Sunday evening with us and we get to, you know, we get to chat about what I wish to chat. Okay, what time is it? Is it already 4 o'clock? Already 9.13 India? Okay, how have you been? How have, how have things been? Mm, the first two minutes of this video is like you can just brush past it. You don't need to really tune in, tune in to know what's happening. But uh, yeah. Okay, I think now we can officially begin. Right, so welcome to the first episode of Tea and Tales. I ensured I keep my mugs with me. It says, Te estoy esperando baby. <laughs> it's in Spanish. It means I'm waiting for you here or I'm waiting here for you, baby. <laughs> so maybe you can take it like a message to you, to yourself or, um, well, whatever. Right. So let's officially begin what we are going to talk about this evening in the first episode of Tea and Tales, because as I have written in the message as well, I have had enough. I am tired. I am exhausted with what is happening. So I definitely need to address a few things. So let's talk about food because I think food is something that just binds us as a community. We, we humans, we meet over food, we chat about food, we gel over food, or when we say let's catch up over a coffee or a juice or lunch or dinner, food kind of binds us together. As I say, a family that eats together stays together. So I thought why not have the first episode around food and the conversation of food. Now, the thing with food is day by day, food is becoming more and more complicated. Why? Because we are a liberal world. We have a right to decide what we eat. Of course, we do. We definitely do. So there are different sorts of diets that have come into picture. And you won't believe I was studying today and I had this huge list in front of me because I was like, let me write down how many diets I know, how many diets are there that I am aware of. And I was amazed with the number that I knew because I eat simple food. If I know so many diets, I can't even imagine how many would there be. So there is definitely somebody who eats everything, which could be, we call them carnivore. They eat meats, they eat eggs, they eat veggies, they eat everything. Then there are vegetarians, then there are vegans, then we have something called a keto diet, we have something called a paleo diet, there are fruitarians who eat just fruit, there are people who just do juicing, there are people who do high protein diet, hey Susan, hi, and people who eat just eggs, there are people who just eat bananas, there's alkaline diet, there's military diet, Keep waiting, keep listening. You will be amazed at the amount of diets that are there. 
There's GM diet, which is great for people, say, losing weight in a week when you have to go for a wedding or a party. Atkins diet, zone diet, ketogenics diet, weight watchers diet. There's South Beach diet. Can you believe that? There is Dash diet, flexitarian diet. There's even Kangatarian diet. I mean, you can eat total vegan food, but kangaroo meat is allowed because it. they say it's been originated from Australia and because... They love eating kangaroo meat. This pescatarian diet, people who are vegetarians, but they love to eat or they feel like fish oil is important for them. So they eat it. Correct. So I have proven the fact till now in the past two, three minutes that there are millions of diets these days. Everybody is eating something as per what they feel, what they believe in, what they like, what their choice is, what their taste is. And I'm great with that. I love people who eat what they like to eat. My problem comes when people feel it is their right to not just eat what they feel like, but also to judge others. That is where the problem comes. So what happens is I have seen people for years and years, they have been eating something. Suddenly they see a documentary or somebody, they meet somebody, something happens to their health, there's a health scare and they change. They turn vegan or they turn fruitarian or they just do juicing or something, you know, to to take care of themselves. And then suddenly when they start eating something which is just there, they feel they have a right to judge others about what they follow. So very recently I have, well, now I feel ashamed of calling that person my friend because I don't really be pally with people who judge because that's not my thing. But this person who turned vegan, um, suddenly within a month or so of turning vegan, she thought it's great for me to judge everybody. And I was like, really? Is it really your right? Look, let me tell you, food is one thing people can bond at and people can really have problems with if you really keep messing your opinion with others. So today I'm doing this video to tell you what happens when you judge somebody. It's not about their food or their looks or their dress or what they do, how they live. What happens when you have a certain sort of judgment? Judgment in a way means closure. When you judge somebody, you're basically trying to say, okay, look, you do this. Great, but I don't approve of it. So I close my mind. I close my eyes. I shut myself to you. I judge you because I don't approve of you. I don't think it is right. So you judge people. When you judge, you basically close your anahata. You close your heart center. You are nowhere in the mode of surrender or grace. So when you want something to be created into your life, it's not going to get created. It's never going to get created. Why? Because you have simply shut the doors. How can you shut the door and then invite me at your place and say, oh, why aren't you entering? Because you are not opening the door for me. It's the same about the universal energy. If you want the grace to be on you, if you want things to be working out for you, if you want your wishes to be answered, Oh, a lot of people are online. Hey, Vanshika. Hi, Ritu. Hey, Neha. Oh my God, I can see some crowd. <laughs> so the great thing is that if you judge, you have like that in a snap, you have simply closed the doors. You don't want any grace on you. You are nowhere in the mode of surrender. And that is where the problem begins. Recently, I went to this quiz night. It was a fundraiser quiz night. A practitioner, a student of mine, she was doing it for Furte Ventura Against Cancer. Her name is Elaine and I have to say this, I was amazed with her work, her energy, her efforts. This event was done in a bar. Practically everybody there was having alcohol. Most of them were meat eaters. Now my question to all those who say, ah, well, so-and-so eats meat or drinks alcohol so bad. My question to you is, these people put together raised more than 500 euros in an evening for cancer patients. What is your judgment about? Are you trying to tell me they drink alcohol, they are bad people, you don't drink alcohol but you point fingers on them and you are the good person? Ask yourself what you're doing.
Ask yourself what happens when you vomit all over your Facebook wall saying, Oh my God, people eat this. It's so bad. That is so bad. Look, bring about facts, but don't judge people because you judging them is doing only harm to you. Nothing is happening to them. They are just going to shut their doors for you like the way you shut your minds for them. It's going to be exactly like that. For example, I see a lot of people. <laughs> so there is a phrase back there in my country, in my language. If you translate it in English, literally, it sounds very funny. It says when somebody uh, tries to wash clothes and is a new washer, uses a lot of soap. So <laughs> what they're trying to say is when you start something new or you are new at a particular gig, you will show off. And that is what I'm saying. That is what I'm talking about. Hey, Harpreet. Hi. I'm sorry. Your card reading will be done tonight. I promise. Oh, my God. She had told me for a card reading and I've been missing on it. So for all the people who love to judge others, this is your moment and your wake up call to just shush, shut up and stop. Okay. And the next point that I wish to bring forward is basically really painful because I see so many people dealing with it and so many people won't even realize that so-and-so is dealing with something. That is depression. It's a real thing. So I meet a lot of people for therapy and you won't believe their issue is not depression. The real issue is that their family, their, their loved ones, their friends, their boyfriend or their girlfriend or their partners, husband, wife, just brush past it. They're going through something, but the partner would be like, it's okay, honey, you're going to be fine. Not a big deal. Somebody sleeps in a little extra, you call them lazy. But when they really keep sleeping extra, do you even try and check what they're going through in their heart? No, you don't. Maybe they are going through depression or some sort of anxiety. When somebody cancels a lot of appointments, let's say you want to catch up with a friend and again and again she calls off. She doesn't want to come out for a coffee or a drink with you or for any lunches or dinner. She keeps canceling. She makes excuses. Try and speak to her. Try and ask her, are you okay? Or maybe say, look, I deal with stuff too. So if you open up to me, I will have somebody to talk about this. That just gives them a chance. So depression is not something that is, oh, you're feeling sad, you're feeling lonely, it's going to be fine and let me move forward. No, it is a serious issue. It is a serious issue. And the more you talk to people, the easier it gets for them to get your help. Just thinking or assuming, especially in places like Asia, India, wherein this concept is relatively new. People still don't understand what anxiety attacks are. Many times they say, oh, okay, my kid gets anxiety or gets anxiety attacks. So let me just give this one a little me time or let's go for a vacation. All that is okay. But your kid or your family member who's getting this sort of issue needs proper help, needs to go to a therapist, needs a professional person to speak to. So especially in countries wherein this is a relatively new concept like India, China, I have friends there, I see them struggling. You need to understand it is a real thing. Times have changed. Back in the day, maybe it didn't happen, but now it does. No matter how sad it is, the sooner you accept it, and the more help you put forward, the better it's going to get because people need it. The kind of pressure that is there of studies of the kids these days, the teenagers, the amount of pressure that they have in terms of dressing up, fashion, showing up, everything. For God's sake, kids, when they are nearing a birthday of theirs, when they have to organize a party, I see kids in intention, they're sweating more than usual. I have teenagers who come to do yoga with me. They are constantly struggling. Why? Because they have pressure. The pressure is increasing every day. So the more you talk about stuff like stress, depression, anxiety, the more help there is going to be. 
okay and again it comes to the same don't judge people with depression because they don't wish it upon them it's not like somebody it's not that i woke up this morning and i said oh my god i would love some anxiety in my system uh wow we have got a question but how do you deal with someone who suffers from depression won't accept it and won't seek professional help great question brilliant oh susan you kind of stole my heart so how do you deal with somebody who who suffers from depression but doesn't accept it maybe they don't really really know it so the first rule is you accept that they don't accept the problem is we are constantly trying to help okay well that's not a problem let me rephrase the issue comes when you're trying to help but you're also wanting the end result so let me give you an example uh, the most beautiful example is marriage two people when they come together they are told and taught back in the day love was unconditional marriages lasted longer than usual now what happens is i'm not saying all the cases are like that but some of the cases i see one rising issue between two humans be it partners husband wife friends is you do something and you expect something in return so what you're doing is not unconditional now you might say of course that's true come on i did this so and so has to understand i'm trying to help but look the person is not in the state to accept or understand what you're trying to offer so your job is to stay on the task keep talking about it keep talking about it when it comes to professional help there's a little trick maybe i can share that's my trick that i do with people who are really close to me and generally don't value any advice of mine yes there are people who don't listen to me and they're like really close people to me so with these people what i do is i kind of give my own example I struggled at this point with so and so thing and you know I went and saw this person and so and so she told me that oh look you're doing this like this but maybe change the approach so when you cite your own example it makes them more comfortable and open to seek professional help of a therapist or a counselor also there is a huge stigma around therapy because people think oh therapy is equal to you taking me to a shrink is equal to i have a psychological problem is equal to am i mad am i losing it am i somebody lesser than someone else so with this kind of issue what happens is people don't really want to uh, take any help because they don't want to fight the stigma when you cite your own example saying look i was struggling i went ahead and did this and i realized that it was all in me i just tweaked it a bit i tweaked my approach and today i'm feeling much better i'm not 100% sorted but i'm much better and then you will see they will have a little more confidence in seeking help Now I have got a question what if someone knows that he or she is in depression or stress and they are scared of sharing with someone because of sharing what other person will think of well honey i just have to say if you know you are in depression if you know you are struggling with something trust me it's your own journey if you start bothering about who's going to think what there are people out there already thinking a lot about you you don't know them that's why you are feeling oh everybody thinks perfect of me no <laughs> you me all of us none of us are existing in this world with perfect opinions about us today when i'm doing this video i am going to piss off a lot of people especially the ones on my list who love to follow a certain diet and who love to judge other people saying oh you eat meat so you are a shitty person oh my god you eat onions that's why you get so angry and these are real life examples okay oh my god she eats a lot of garlic that's why no wonder she gets depressed so people already have opinions people are already making stories about you and they don't need to um they didn't need to have perfect opinions about you 
It's about you feeling great within you. So go out there and maybe if you are getting this feeling, I mean, let's say it's, this is not about you, but the person who wishes to share with somebody and they are getting this fear that, oh, what would this person think about me? They need to change their company. They are not sitting around with the right kind of people. Your close group is such that you should go, <laughs> you should be with those people and you should be able to tell them what you did. Even if it is, even if it is farting in public, that is your real group. Those are your friends. Those are your family. Those are your people that you tell your most embarrassing moments about. Because if you don't have such people in your life, make a little tweaking. You need to tweak it. It is extremely important for make, to make that tweak. And again, I come back to it. Don't judge anyone. And... So you would have heard of something called your vibe attracts your tribe, okay? When you drop all the judgment, people who are judgmental will be deleted from your life. Now you might say, oh, it's not that easy. It is. It really, really is that easy. Just change. Just change your attitude. So me, for me, if you are somebody who judges others, you being friends with me is going to be a really hard task because I am, I'll be like looking at you and going like, really? Is that, is that the kind of garbage you carry in your head? I'm sorry, you and me, mm -mm, it's not going to work out. So you change your vibe, you change your tribe and then you have people. And this is for the person that you asked me about, Neharika. So I'm not saying it's you, but let's say if it is you as well, there's no problem. Hey, Rekha, how are you? I love seeing your photos that you keep sharing. <laughs> she shares some lovely photos in her story. So, I mean, change your, change your vibe and change your tribe. It's very clear. And I was saying, if it is about you as well, there is no problem. Sometimes people think, oh, she does therapy. She's a therapist, which means she has to be perfect. Dude, if I am perfect in my emotions and there is no fluctuation ever at all, I am not human, okay? There are times I go through that little phase of anxiety. There are times I feel lonely. There are times I feel depressed. There are times I struggle. And so do you. We all do. It's just that I try and not judge anybody and slowly I see people around me don't judge me. They accept the fact there are times I will start my yoga class saying look we're going to start 10 minutes late because 10 minutes I want to talk about what a shit day I had because usually I start all my classes saying how are you really feeling they tell me all about it who do I go to so I do the same the other day my toilet broke and um, it was leaking I had the whole day cleaning uh, with with a mop in my hat that's how I did that's how the, I spend the day and when I had my evening batch walk into my shala for practice, first thing on my mind was, oh my God, these are my people I want to share with them that I am frustrated. And amazing, I spoke about it. There was no judgment. They just spoke to me. They understood what I went through. And after that, the practice was magical. These are my people. My vibe is what my tribe is. And that is exactly how you have to um, be. That is how you have to keep your circle, you know. They say, there is there is a phrase that says, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. But don't even keep them too close, you know. <laughs> Though there are no enemies of yours, you, your own mindset is your friend or your enemy. But I think that is about it. Don't judge. Eat what you like. Be the way you like. And lastly, I want to make a request. When you see someone judging somebody else, have the courage to speak up and say, you know what? You just closed yourself for grace. You just shut your heart center. Your anahata is so shut that no grace is going to reach to you because you are judging somebody. Have the courage, have the guts to say it out loud. When you say it out loud, some mouths, some faces, some people would shut. They will stop judging. When they will stop judging, 
problems like depression, stress, anxiety, they will slowly and gradually diminish from our society. We'll have more open hearts. People will talk about their heartbreaks more openly. People will say their mistakes without fear. They will express more freely. This is so, so important. Well, let's see who all are there. Hey, Veena. Hi, Christine. Uh, oh, hey, Shiv. Oh, my God. Michaela. Hi. Oh, oh I, there are so many people online. I'm feeling amazing about this. <laughs> okay, so I think um, we've spent good 20, almost 25 minutes. And now I'm going to take a leave. Uh, here I have my nice infusion with me my tea and my tales for today i'm trying to do tea and tales every second sunday of the month it will help me to do this if you share my videos on your wall why because um you know somewhere somebody just needs a little conversation and this little conversation can bring a change so if you really found any sense, even 1% of sense in what I spoke to you today and somewhere you relate to it, you feel the same, please just put a little like on my video and share this back on your wall. Once, once I finish, it will take about 10 minutes, I think, to be uploaded. Then share this video on your wall. This live video can be shared across and uh, speak to people, speak to them about what they feel, have heart-to-heart -heart conversations, not about the, the useless stuff, you know, talk useful stuff, talk meaningful stuff, connect to people with their energy, be so high in your vibration that when you enter the room, the room lights up, as I say. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, I hope to see you in the next episode of Tea and Tales. I am doing more vlogs on my YouTube channel now, so please subscribe. That'll be great if you can do that. I have recently shared a Shiva Mantra on my YouTube channel and uh, chanting that every day can bring about grace and magic in your life. Um, just stay tuned to my page. That's all. That's all I need. Thank you so much. Well, Rekha has said something. Let's just pick it before I go. I don't bother with people who judge. Some people don't change, but those who want to change will change and make a difference to themselves positively. There you go, girl. All the best. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you very soon, which will be in my next live. Namaste. Bye. Have a happy weekend and a great week.